sustainable meant, the word. And several of them actually had it down. And their answer was, something has to end. I thought that was a good answer. And yep, so yep. I know we're on the same page as far as, uh, at least I think we are, as far as this economic system is unsustainable. How do you see it if you do as unsustainable and why? Well, then, very good insight. Uh, you can, unsustainability can, can apply to a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, if something cannot go on forever, it's not going to go on forever, I assure you. And at the moment, the economic system, which has evolved in the world, especially in the U.S., but not just the U.S., cannot be sustained because it is built on staggering amounts of debt. The United States, I'm a U.S. citizen, so I hate saying this, but the United States is now the largest debtor nation not just in the world, Dan, but in the history of the world. No country has ever gotten so deep in debt. And the debt goes higher and higher every day. Nobody's doing anything about it except some are worrying, like me, are worrying, knowing it cannot go on. And not only is it based on lots of debt, but to sustain the debt or to maintain it, that they now print a lot of money. The central bank in America gets out its printing presses, prints a lot of money, and uses that to finance the debt going forward. So. This cannot last forever. Uh, the politicians, the ones that are aware of it, and the central bankers, the ones that are aware of it, hope that it will last at least until they're gone. Uh, but I'm afraid it's not going to last too much longer because we're getting to the end of the road. The Europeans now have huge amounts of debt. Japan has gigantic amounts of debt. Everybody. Some countries in the world have been talking about austerity in the last few years because they said they're going to cut back. Ha! Ah, Every country in the world now has higher debt than it did last year and will have higher debt next year. So is it sustainable? Absolutely not. And austerity is for the people. It's not for the banking system or the government. It's not for the politicians. I assure you, the politicians make sure that they're taken care of. In America, whenever Congress passes a law, no matter what it is, they say it does not apply to Congress. Right. So if you and I have to pay Social Security or cannot be – a, a harass people or whatever, doesn't matter. Right. Congress, none of those laws apply to Congress. Just like so Obamacare. I, uh, everything, yeah, Obamacare. Yeah. Every law that they pass says specifically this does not apply to Congress or yeah. Senate. It's a corrupt crony club, crony capitalist club, and we're not members. When I was a kid, I thought I lived in the land of the free, and I did to, to most, to some extent, a large extent. It is no longer the land of the free, Dan, I'm afraid. It, I, it pains me to see what's happened just in my lifetime. I bet. And it's getting worse. Yeah, yeah. It seems we've uh, spiraled down into, I hate to say the word, but fascism, huh? Does that apply? We have we have certainly going in that direction. And, and to repeat, something which is not sustainable will not continue forever. You know, it, it, it comes to an end. Now, that's the... That's the good news. That's also the bad news yeah. because when this ends, I'm afraid we're going to have lots of economic problems and turmoil, not just in the U.S., but worldwide. So everybody should be knowledgeable. Everybody should be very worried, and everybody should be prepared because it's not going to end well. Well, that's what it seems. I mean, we have these derivatives are, are fascinating to me. It, it seems a way of even – creating money in a way, derivatives. It, it expands the money supply through, um, you know, these paper contracts. But, you know, according to some authorities, there's a quadrillion or over a quadrillion derivatives. And I'm really wondering what you think the trigger is going to be. And I know it's really hard to put a pin exactly what's going to happen or when, but What's your feel for this? Uh, what's going to pop it is, you know, D Deutsche Bank is in big trouble right now, and they've got the largest derivative exposure. Is it going to be derivatives? Is it going to be the housing market? Is it going to be negative interest rates that are spreading around the world? How do you see this, Jim? Well, you said quadrillion. I don't know if anybody really knows, but we know it's, so, it's probably so much that we cannot count yeah. that high how much the derivatives market really is. Now, Dan, there's nothing wrong inherently with a derivative. Uh, it's, it's the use, of, the misuse of derivatives. Derivatives can be a useful uh, uh, instrument. There's no question. It's like a Porsche. A Porsche is not dangerous uh, in and of itself. A Porsche will get you from L.A. to New York 
faster and more efficient than other things, than a Greyhound bus. But if you misuse it, it can be an extraordinarily dangerous thing. So one must be careful of how, when we speak about derivatives. But your point, your better point, or your, your main point is very well taken. The, the debt is staggering. It's been increased because of derivatives. Most banks don't really know how deeply exposed they are. Deutsche Bank is the largest bank in Germany, the largest bank in Germany, and it has taken huge losses. And who knows what else may hit Deutsche Bank in the future, because everything cannot work perfectly all the time. Uh, will that be the end? I don't think, well, it might start in the derivatives market. The way, the way problems usually start in the financial world, Dan, or economic world is, it starts with a small company or country or something that people aren't paying too much attention to, and then that snowballs. Because if Iceland, which is a tiny country, for instance, gets into trouble, the next thing you know, the people who have been dealing with Iceland are in trouble too, and usually they're bigger. And so this, the, it snowballs. I, and this, using Iceland as an example, is exactly what happened in 2007 and 2008. Iceland has 300,000 people. I mean, it's smaller than most American cities. And yet, it's, it pricked the bubble and started the big problems of 2008 and 2009. So it usually is something like that. It's something you and I are not thinking about. Most people are not thinking about. And just watch the newspapers, watch your show. You know, we're going to find out as the problems develop. Uh, it could be, I mean, Illinois. It could be, who knows what it could be that could, could cause the problems as we go forward. And then they will be compounded by the derivatives as a lot of those derivatives start going bad because things will happen that people say never could have happened. Well, don't say never in the financial world because anything can happen. Hmm. Now, Jim, you, you have to be connected. You're, you're a big name. You, are, you rub elbows with people I don't get to sit with. Do you suspect this is all engineered? Do you, th I mean, it seems to me that they can't be this stupid. And I didn't have a radio show back in 2006 and 2007, and I wasn't even studying this. But I predicted that things had to end ugly, just from the people that I talked to in my immediate circles about real estate. Um, I saw that coming, and so a couple of my friends did as well. And I saw a report from the Federal Reserve that said something to the effect of, everything's great. Our real estate market is super. The, the Federal Reserve can't be that dumb. The, can, do you subscribe to this idea that they're just completely ignorant and don't know what they're doing, or is this engineered? Yeah, what do you mean they can't be that dumb? They can't. <laughs> what makes you say that? <laughs> they all went to Ivy League schools. They all have PhDs. They can be that dumb. I assure you. <laughs> They are that dumb. Really? I mean, one of the problems with not just America, mo many countries, you know, they think if you went to uh, Oxford or Cambridge or an Ivy League school, you must be smart and know what you're doing. Well, let me tell you, Dan, I went to an Ivy League school. I went to Oxford. They are that dumb. They don't know what they're talking about. They live in an Ivy Tower. Uh, you know, they just don't get it. They don't understand the real world, most of it. So, yes, they are that dumb. Secondly, is it a conspiracy? No, I don't think so. I just think they're really that dumb. Well, first, I will say they all try to protect themselves. They all try to make sure that they are covered, that their salaries, jobs, positions continue. And they come up with all sorts of strange things to what they think will maintain it. It nearly always throughout history has made it worse. So they, they think and I don't think they're, well, some of them, many of them are dishonest, especially the politicians and even some of the bankers, central bankers. But they only become dishonest when their policies start going wrong and then they try to cover themselves. So I'm delighted you saw the problems coming. Uh, apparently, you think there might be some more problems coming. And let me tell you, there are going to be a lot more problems. Dan, in the U.S., we've had recessions, economic slowdowns, corrections, call them what you will, every four to seven years on average since the beginning of the republic, then it's going to happen again, no matter what the politicians tell you, no matter what the central banks tell you, it's coming again. I don't know if it's coming this year, next year, or in 2020, but I know we're going to have more, and the next problems are going to be worse because the debt is so, so, so much higher. 
I can't even see how high the debt is. It's huge, yeah. Well, and it's for the first time in history, it's global and everybody, all these economies are based on sovereign debt. Um, it seems like all the economies are based on infinite growth models. Um, these are all unsustainable practices. But I'm really curious, for the first time, you know, we're talking about the cashless society right now, and, and so much of everything are blips on computer. You know, it, um, you are an economist. You studied this. You studied this at a high level. You have to know more than I do. Help, maybe help me and the listeners understand. Why is it? Somebody asked me this just recently. If it's all just blips on a computer, Jim, and they say, you know, let's say the blips on the computer say you have $2 million. Or let's say you have, you have $2 million in debt. Why can't they just change the blips on the computer to make, it, make you have $8 million? I mean, if all well, this, like, for instance, Jim, one of the things that boggles my mind is that the Federal Reserve is the Biggest buyer of treasuries. The Federal Reserve is buying the debt, and so it just goes on some piece of paper on their balance sheet. And what the hell is a balance sheet? Oh, and you're, you're, <laughs> you're asking the right questions. You're perceptive. For somebody who says he didn't know a few years ago what was going on, you've certainly educated yourself to a, to an, a, great, a great extent. I will just go back to cash to society first. There is going to be a cashless society, but that's not for your benefit or my benefit or the viewer's benefit. That's for the politician's benefit. Then they can control your money even more. They know every cent you have, where it is, what you did with it. If you bought your girlfriend or your boyfriend a box of chocolate, they know it. And if they don't like chocolate, they're going to come after you because you bought your boyfriend or girlfriend a box of chocolate. So... This is not good for you and me. And if they say they're going to take your money, all they have to do, you said it's a computer blip. They have your money. One stroke of a key and your money has gone and you, are, you might get it back someday, but you lose a lot in the meantime and suffer a lot. So none of this is good for you and me. This is to give them more control. As far as blips on a screen, yes, and they can just – and in effect, that's what they're doing. The Federal Reserve is just – hitting the keyboard and producing more money. Yep. You and I aren't getting it. The people, the bankers are getting it, and, and the friends of the, of the central bank and the politicians are getting it. Some of it trickles down to other people, their friends. But you and I aren't getting all this money. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet, the balance sheet, the balance sheet is the, your net worth. It's what your, your assets and your liabilities. If you have money in the bank, that's your assets, and if you owe the credit card, that's a liability. But a balance sheet is just compiling all that so you know your status. Well, the Federal Reserve has increased its balance sheet by 600% in eight years. Yeah. Now, that is a staggering statement for anyone who is familiar with economic history. It, it has nothing like that has ever happened. Nothing like that has ever been conceived of and what does it in mean? world history. But they're doing it. And so what does it mean if they can just, like, you know, for instance, China's sold, what, a trillion or a couple of trillion dollars in bonds of, of treasuries. What are we giving them in, in exchange for that? Do you know? I mean, you're not giving them dollars. They don't want dollars. Well, they earn dollars uh, as opposed to our government, which owes huge amounts of dollars. The Chinese are the largest creditor nation. A creditor nation is a nation which has saved its money and people owe it. And a debtor nation like the United States is a, is a nation which has not saved its money, which has spent a lot of money, and which owes a lot of money. Well, the U.S. is the largest debtor nation in world history. China is the largest creditor nation as we speak today. China has obviously sold a lot to the world. Look around your office. Look around your house. You'll see a lot of things that came from China. Go to Walmart. You'll see a lot of things that came from China. Now, that means that all of us get cheaper and better products. I don't think there's anybody watching this would say, oh, I want to pay more for my rugs. I want to pay more for my television or anything. We all want to buy something cheaper and better. Fortunately, we've been able for a while. We did that from the Japanese. The Japanese show, sold us cheaper and better things. Now it's the Chinese. So what do they get? They get money. Uh, we get cheaper and better goods, and they get money, and they've saved up a lot of that money, which they basically then turn around and lend 
to the U.S. government. The U.S. government is spending money it doesn't have. They got to get it from somewhere. Most of us <laughs> lend money to the U.S. government, but the Chinese have said, "Okay, we will lend you money to pay your debts." So what are they getting? Well, they're they're getting selling、that. their treasuries, their U.S. treasuries. What are they getting in return? Gold. Well, when they sell them, they get U.S. dollars. Now it's up to them what they do with it. They could buy gold. They could buy wheat. They could buy German. They could lend money to the Germans. Buying real estate all over the place. They can buy real estate. They are buying a lot of farmland in yeah, they... many countries in the world. They're buying a lot of mines in many countries in the world. They're buying oil fields. You know, the, the Chinese are acting like very good capitalists. So <laughs> unfortunately, we supposedly the best capitalists are not acting like good capitalists.、Uh, we are acting more like socialists or communists. Uh, and they are saving their money and putting it into assets for a rainy day for the future, which、yeah. is what capitalism is all about. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That it is amazing. They're more capitalist than we are. Bailouts、okay. and bay, bail-ins, Jim.、Um, they've got the laws in place for bail-ins, and for those of our listeners who don't know what that means, it means that they've set up the rules so that、uh, if the banking system fails, derivatives come first. And our bank deposits come last, and a lot of people don't know that the people. If your money is in the bank, it's not your money. You are a creditor, and so they're kind of got this set up to take money from the populace. Do you see bail-ins, or when this next collapse happens, bail-outs? Are they both going to happen? What do you think? Man, I said earlier the debt is now staggering levels. It's going to be a huge problem for all of us worldwide, and yes. If you have money in the bank, they're going to take your money away. They changed the law. They changed this law in 2008 or 9,、yeah. so that now, if you have what they say is too much money in the bank, they're just going to take part of your money or maybe all of your money to pay the bank's bills. You had nothing to do with the bank's bills. You had absolutely nothing to do with the failure of the bank. But if your money's there, the law in the land of the free is that we can take your money and we can pay. The bills or the debts of the bank—that's called bail-in, and it's going to happen.、Uh, I mean, if you—if you're not aware of it, I would suggest people find out and make sure you don't have too much money in one bank. There's FDI insurance, and we're guaranteed—we're supposedly guaranteed that if the bank fails, you know, we'll get that much money back. But it will also be that if you have what they say is too much money, they're going to take the extra money. Yeah, some people say Cyprus was a test run for this, and they, you know, took 50% of people's deposits, and it certainly happened. They've changed the laws all over the world now. Yeah,、so、and they don't make those the government. Yeah, they're not doing that for no reason at all. They just all of a sudden、know. decide to do it for fun. And you and I are not the only ones who know their problems coming. Yeah, you know,、uh, the bankers know their problems coming, and they're、yeah. trying to cover themselves. So they went to the government and said, "What do we do?" The government said, "Okay, we'll just take it away from the people."、Yeah. And the people are the, are the bottom, the bottom of all totem poles as far as the government is concerned. Yeah, yeah. So we seem to have a deflationary period right now. I've kind of been thinking about this as I've tried to wrap my head around economics over the past、um, three, four years, and、uh, it was very interesting to see people say, "Oh, we're going to have inflation because of all this QE," and inflation was going to go up and up, and gas was going to go up and up, and all of a sudden. Oil just went down and down and down, and some of the people that、uh, like, oh, Harry Dent,、uh, I like to listen to sometimes, who talks about demographics,、uh, he predicted the deflationary period、uh, right now.、Um, what do you think about this? Are we going to have more deflation? Is it going to end up inflation? How do you see it playing well, out? And there's no question that oil prices are down,、uh, which means that if you go to the to the gas station, you pay less. But Dan. Maybe you don't do any shopping. Maybe your butler does your shopping. But the rest of us, we know that insurance prices are up, education prices are up, entertainment prices are up, automobile prices are up, transportation prices are up. There are very, very few things that anyone can name where prices are actually down. Now the government tells us there's no inflation,、yeah. but people write to me all the time and say, "Where does the government shop?" Because you know prices at my show, my stores are going higher. If you go to a restaurant. The prices are up a lot. Movies, it doesn't. Baseball games, it doesn't matter where you go. Prices are up. Oil prices are down. Some commodity prices are down, and 
that is helping. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. But then basically prices all over the world continue to go up, except for the few things that are hit in the commodities markets. But I don't expect, I anyway, don't expect that to last too much longer. Those prices will start going up again as well. So then ask your butler to go back and look to see what you were paying for electricity a year ago or what you were paying for grits a year ago or what you were paying for anything a year ago, education, anything. You will see that prices are up for most things. For most things. And they're going to go higher. They are going to go higher unless the world comes to an end. Now, if the world comes to an end, which is likely, as I was ex explained to you before, then the governments are going to print even more money and spend even more money, and there will come a time when things will get very much out of control. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid uh -huh. of is, you know, as we get closer to things popping that, uh, you know, they take us to war historically, don't they? And they're all prime. We've got all kinds of theaters that they can – you know, flip the switch and make something go live. I mean, our government's so good at false flags. I don't have any qu any doubt that they would just create something as if if no other reason, maybe for a distraction. So, hey, this all economic thing was not our fault. Um, you know, the Russians and the Chinese or the North Koreans or, you know, whatever boogeyman of the day they want to pick, really. They have their pick, don't they? Very insightful. That's exactly what and I don't really I really don't like saying this since I'm an American citizen, taxpayer and voter as well. But historically, if you look back over the past few years, decades, somebody in Washington loves war. Yeah. It's always getting us into a war. And they use false flags, this whole thing in Ukraine where we started. It's some bureaucrat in Washington, Victoria Nolan, uh, you know, all of a sudden we're at war and, and they're blaming it on Russia. Well, yeah. Russians, in this case, the Russians outsmarted us, but most people in the world know this was started by Washington, D.C., and yet Washington, D.C. says, oh, no, no, it's the evil foreigners, yeah. the evil foreigners, yeah. Syria, the same thing, ISIS. We started ISIS. Yeah. Now we're blaming it all on, on, on other people. Well, and you and I are not the only people in the world who read newspapers or can go on the Internet. Uh, unfortunately, the people in Washington, back to those bureaucrats, they have unlimited, they have huge amounts of power, and they start wars, they start fights, they blame it on foreigners, they blame it on other people, and yet you and I pay the bills, our country pays the bills, and we and the rest of the world suffer. It's not fun. I mean, this is not, I don't particularly like saying any of this. Yeah, me either. Unfortunately, that's what's happening. Something happens to Americans when they go to Washington. I have been around the world a few times, as you know. And people around the world love Americans, but they cannot bear our government. They cannot bear our policies in many cases, but they sure love Americans. But, but Dan, the people in Washington, something happens. If you live in Missouri, and suddenly you go to Missouri, uh, you go to Washington as a bureaucrat or a politician, something happens to you. I don't know what it is. The air, the water or something, <laughs> you get corrupted. Yeah. Well, do you, you know, hey, in South America, in the Middle East, all over the world, there are economies that are collapsing. I mean, Argentina is a mess right now, and Brazil, and is, I mean, who's who's next to fall? What do the dominoes look like to you? You think the next one will be Japan? Venezuela. Venezuela is another one in South America that's yeah. in the process of collapsing. It's a, it's amazing how countries keep getting worse and worse, and then if not this country, another country. I don't know which will be next. The Japanese certainly have a lot of problems. Yeah. The debt has gone up by gigantic amounts of money. The uh, amounts, the currency is down 50% in the last three or four years. The currency is collapsing. Could be Japan. Japan, And that's the, the what happens in financial markets. It's always some surprise. Now, most people in the world right now would say, Japan, well, that's a very rich and powerful country. Ah, and that's where the surprises come. When you find rich and power, supposedly rich and successful companies or people or countries that basically underlying or corroding. In 1918, everybody thought Great Britain was the richest country in the world. It was in the process of going down very fast because of previous mistakes. So that's what's happening. It might be Japan. I, I don't think it's going to start in Japan. I think it'll start somewhere smaller, whether it's a company or a country. But sure, that's a good insight. It could be. They've got big, big problems. You mentioned earlier, you, you seem like you alluded to that we are going to have 
a cashless society. Um, as if they're going to win that battle and they're going to get the computer blips and the tyrannical control. Are you? Uh, I like to be an optimist. <laughs> I want to be an optimist. And I want to believe. Um, I'm also really. I, I want to be realistic about it. But I, um, I'm really curious about what you think. Are is there going to be a new world order? Is there going to be a a one world government and one currency? I mean, when all this collapse, are we going to come together? Do you think that's going to happen? And they're going to say, oh, the dollar failed and the reserve currency, and let's go to a SDR or or you know, how do you see it playing out? Are they going to win, or are the people going to wake up and become more conscious? When the war comes, they will win for a while, uh, whoever they is, and whichever countries are at war. But somebody's going to lose that war, and then though, with that country, things are going to change very dramatically because people are going to be very unhappy. Their economies collapse, their war has collapsed, and they're going to make huge, huge, dramatic changes. Now, the winners are the ones you have to worry about because they will think that they're all powerful and they can do whatever they want. But they will not be able to make one world government. They may try, but it will not happen. You see what happened to the League of Nations and the UN and, and the, even the EU, the European Union. Yeah. Those things just have not and will not work. You talk about SDRs, which is a kind of paperless money. Well, people are going to want something that they think they can touch or hold, even if it's on their computer screen. Now, an SDR, I guess if it's on your computer screen, and if people start to accept it, because in wartime they'll have to, that might that might work. But then eventually, we're going to just we being us poor saps who are the public, who are the people, who are the voters, are not going to put up with it anymore. And fortunately, history shows that we always throw them out when they just get too too overbearing and overreaching. That sometimes takes years, decades. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson said that we should have everybody, we especially, should have a revolution every generation because otherwise things get corroded and, and rotten. And he's right. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't ever had a revolution every generation. Every generation, the bureaucrats have more bureaucrats, and you and I suffer. Well, it seems like an awful lot of people are uh, becoming more aware. I have conversations. I know I live in a little bubble, and I have a small uh, circle of, of um, people that I – but you know what? I go and talk with the gas station attendant and the waitress, and I, I try to get a feel and put my finger on the pulse. And um, so many people are aware of what happened in 9-11. Um, you know, people say, oh, they, they – you know, they couldn't get away with something like that. They didn't get away with that. I mean, a lot of I think half of Americans believe now. I think statistically, half of Americans believe it was an inside job. So, which means they didn't get away with it. And I don't know. Um, I'm optimistic because of I guess the internet is relatively free right now. It's relatively uncensored, and uh, there's just a lot of people that are picking up on this message that you and I are talking about today. Well, yes, the Internet has been a great leveler. It has certainly opened us up to many, many new ideas. When I was a kid, there were three television channels you could watch. Me too. And if you didn't like what they were saying, you didn't have much choice. Yep. Now there are hundreds of television channels from all over the world. And, of course, the Internet means tens of thousands of new sources of information. Some of it is wrong, as you well know. Yeah. But I'm trying to teach my children that they should uh, consider as many sources as they can and then put it together themselves to figure out what reality really is. And that is good, that, it, that the amount of information is expanded, just as you point out. It's harder and harder to lie to us. I went to the Soviet Union a few times when they were still, when they were still communist, and, but, and towards the end there, people were saying, wait a minute, we now know they've been lying to us. Mm -hmm. You know, before the, the Soviet had more knowledgeable than well, I am as well. Yeah. They surprise me how smart they are. And I asked them what sustainability meant. Uh, I'm sorry, I asked them what unsustainable meant, the word. And several of them actually had it down. And their answer was, something has to end. I thought that was a good answer. And yep. so I know we're on the same page as far as, uh, at least I think we are, as far as this economic system is unsustainable how do you see it if you do as unsustainable and why? Well, Dan, very good insight. Uh, you can, unsustainability can, can apply to a lot of things. 
Yeah. Uh, if something cannot go on forever, it's not going to go on forever, I assure you. And at the moment, the economic system, which has evolved in the world, especially in the U.S., but not just the U.S., cannot be sustained because it is built on staggering amounts of debt. The United States, I'm a U.S. citizen, so I hate saying this, but the United States is now the largest debtor nation, not just in the world, Dan, but in the history of the world. No country has ever gotten so deep in debt. And the debt goes higher and higher every day. Nobody's doing anything about it except some are worrying, like me, are worrying, knowing it cannot go on. And not only is it based on lots of debt, but to sustain the debt or to maintain it, that they now print a lot of money. The central bank in America gets out its printing presses, prints a lot of money, and uses that to finance the debt going forward. So this cannot last forever. Uh, the politicians, the ones that are aware of it, and the central bankers, the ones that are aware of it, hope that it will last at least until they're gone. Uh, but I'm afraid it's not going to last too much longer because we're getting to the end of the road. The Europeans now have huge amounts of debt. Japan has gigantic amounts of debt. Everybody. Some countries in the world have been talking about austerity in the last few years because they said they're going to cut back. Ha! Ah. Every country in the world now has higher debt than it did last year and will have higher debt next year. So is it sustainable? Absolutely not. And austerity is for the people. It's not for the banking system or the government. It's not for the politicians. I assure you, the politicians make sure that they're taken care of. In America, whenever Congress passes a law, no matter what it is, they say it does not apply to Congress. Right. So if you and I have to pay Social Security or cannot be... A, a harass people or whatever, doesn't matter. Right. Congress, none of those laws apply to Congress. Just like so Obamacare. I, 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 everything, yeah, Obamacare. Yeah. Every law that they pass says specifically this does not apply to Congress. Our yeah. senators. It's a corrupt crony club, a crony capitalist club, and we're not members. When I was a kid, I thought I lived in the land of the free, and I did to, to most, to some extent, a large extent. It is no longer the land of the free, Dan, I'm afraid. It, I, it pains me to see what's happened just in my lifetime. I bet. And it's getting worse. Yeah, yeah. It seems we've uh, spiraled down into, I hate to say the word, but fascism, huh? Does that apply? We have we have certainly going in that direction. And, and to repeat, something which is not sustainable will not continue forever. You know, it, it, it comes to an end. Now, that's the... That's the good news. That's also the bad news, yeah. because when this ends, I'm afraid we're going to have lots of economic problems and turmoil, not just in the U.S., but worldwide. So everybody should be knowledgeable, everybody should be very worried, and everybody should be prepared, because it's not going to end well. Well, that's what it seems. I mean, we have these derivatives are, are fascinating to me. It, it seems a way of even creating money. Or country or something that people aren't paying too much attention to. And then that snowballs because if Iceland, which is a tiny country, for instance, gets into trouble, the next thing you know, the people who have been dealing with Iceland are in trouble too, and usually they're bigger. And so this, the, it snowballs. I, and this, using Iceland as an example, is exactly what happened in 2007 and 2008. Iceland has 300,000 people. I mean, it's smaller than most American cities, and yet it's, it pricked the bubble and started the big problems of 2008 and 2009. So it usually is something like that. It's something you and I are not thinking about. Most people are not thinking about. And just watch the newspapers, watch your show. You know, we're going to find out as the problems develop. Uh, it could be, I mean, Illinois. It could be, who knows what it could be that could, could cause the problems as we go forward. And then they will be compounded by the derivatives as a lot of those derivatives start going bad because things will happen that people say never could have happened. Well, don't say never in the financial world because anything can happen. Hmm. Now, Jim, you you have to be connected. You're you're a big name. You are you rub elbows with people I don't get to sit with. Do you suspect this is all engineered? Do you? Th I mean. It seems to me that they can't be this stupid. And I didn't have a radio show back in 2006 and 2007. And I wasn't even studying this. But I predicted 
that things had to end ugly. Just from the people that I talked to in my immediate circles about real estate, um, I saw that coming, and so a couple of my friends did as well. And I saw a report from the Federal Reserve that said something to the effect of, everything's great. Our real estate market is super. The, the Federal Reserve can't be that dumb. The, can, do you subscribe to this idea that they're just completely ignorant and don't know what they're doing, or is this engineered? Yeah, what do you mean they can't be that dumb? They can't. <laughs> what makes you say that? <laughs> they all went to Ivy League schools. They all have PhDs. They can be that dumb. I assure you. <laughs> They are that dumb. Really? I mean, one of the problems with not just America, mo many countries, you know, they think if you went to a Oxford or Cambridge or an Ivy League school, you must be smart and know what you're doing. Well, let me tell you, Dan, I went to an Ivy League school. I went to Oxford. They are that dumb. They don't know what they're talking about. They live in an Ivy Tower. Uh, you know, they just don't get it. They don't understand the real world, most of it. So, yes, they are that dumb. Secondly, is it a conspiracy? No, I don't think so. I just think they're really that dumb. Well, first, I will say they all try to protect themselves. They all try to make sure that they are covered, that their salaries, jobs, positions continue. And they come up with all sorts of strange things to what they think will maintain it. It nearly always throughout history has made it worse. So they, they think and I don't think they're, well, some of them, many of them are dishonest, especially the politicians and even some of the bankers, central bankers. But they only become dishonest when their policies start going wrong and then they try to cover themselves. So I'm delighted you saw the problems coming. Uh, apparently, you think there might be some more problems coming. And let me tell you, there are going to be a lot more problems. Dan, in the U.S., we've had recessions, economic slowdowns, corrections, call them what you will, every four to seven years on average since the beginning of the republic, then it's going to happen again, no matter what the politicians tell you, no matter what the central banks tell you, it's coming again. I don't know if it's coming this year, next year, or in, in a way, derivatives, it, it expands the money supply through... Um you know, these paper contracts, but, you know, according to some authorities, there's a quadrillion or over a quadrillion derivatives. And I'm really wondering what you think the trigger is going to be. And I know it's really hard to put a pin exactly what's going to happen or when, but what's your feel for this? Uh, what's going to pop it is, you know, Deutsche Bank is in big trouble right now, and they've got the largest derivative exposure. Is it going to be derivatives? Is it going to be the housing market? Is it going to be negative interest rates that are spreading around the world? How do you see this, Jim? Well, you said quadrillion. I don't know if anybody really knows, but we know it's, so, it's probably so much that we cannot count yeah. that high how much the derivatives market really is. Now, Dan, there's nothing wrong inherently with a derivative. Uh, it's, it's the use, of, the misuse of derivatives. Derivatives can be a useful uh, instrument. There's no question. It's like a Porsche. A Porsche is not dangerous uh, in and of itself. A Porsche will get you from L.A. to New York faster and more efficient than other things, than a Greyhound bus. But if you misuse it, it can be an extraordinarily dangerous thing. So one must be careful of how, when we speak about derivatives. But your point, is your better point, or your, your main point is, very well taken. The, the debt is staggering. It's been increased because of derivatives. Most banks don't really know how deeply exposed they are. Deutsche Bank is the largest bank in Germany, the largest bank in Germany, and it has ta 